Come closer, and let us look out into the great dark expanse. For millennia, humanity has gazed at the stars with wonder. We have told stories about them. We have navigated our world by them. We have dreamed of what might lie beyond our small blue home. Now we have a new eye to peer into that darkness. An eye of gold and metal floating silently in the cold of space. It is called the James Webb Space Telescope. It is a marvel of human ingenuity, a creation born from our unending desire to know where we came from and if we are alone. This telescope is not just another instrument, it is our messenger to the dawn of time. This magnificent machine was sent on a long journey far from the Earth, beyond the orbit of our moon. It travelled to a special place in space where it could be still and cold, shielded from the blinding light of our own sun. From this lonely vantage point, it unfolds its giant golden mirror, like a flower opening to the cosmos. This mirror, made of 18 hexagonal segments, is designed to catch the faintest whispers of light that have travelled across billions of years to reach us. To understand what the Webb Telescope does, we must first understand the nature of light itself. Light travels incredibly fast, faster than anything else we know, but the universe is so immense that even light needs time to journey across it. When you look up at the moon, you are not seeing it as it is right now. You are seeing it as it was about one second ago. The light from our sun takes eight minutes to reach us. So when we look at the sun, we are seeing it as it was eight minutes in the past. This is the simple, beautiful secret of looking back in time. The stars you see in the night sky are much, much farther away. The light from the nearest star system, Alpha Centauri, takes more than four years to arrive at Earth. This means we are seeing those stars as they were four years ago. Many of the stars we can see with our naked eye are hundreds of light years away, even thousands of light years away. We are looking at ancient history painted across the canvas of the night. The James Webb Space Telescope is special because it is designed to see a particular kind of light. It is called infrared light. Our eyes cannot see it, but we can feel it as heat. Over billions of years, as space has stretched, the waves of light have stretched with it, shifting into the infrared part of the spectrum. Webb's golden mirror is perfectly tuned to capture these stretched ancient whispers of light from the dawn of time. With its powerful instruments and its unique ability to see in infrared, the Webb telescope began its work. Scientists pointed it towards a seemingly empty patch of the sky, a region that appeared dark and quiet to other telescopes. They left the shutter open for hours, letting the faint ancient light slowly collect on its sensitive detectors. This technique is known as a deep field observation. It is like leaving a bucket out in a light drizzle for a very long time. Eventually, even the tiniest drops of rain will fill it up. In the same way, Webb gathers the faintest photons of light from the edge of the observable universe. The result of this patient gaze was an image that took our breath away. The darkness was not empty at all. It was teeming with light, with galaxies, thousands of them. Each tiny speck of light in the image was not a star, but an entire galaxy home to billions of its own stars. Some were spiral galaxies, like our own Milky Way. Others were misshapen blobs, still in the process of forming. It was a cosmic portrait, capturing galaxies at all different stages of their lives, all in one single, magnificent frame. The universe, it seemed, was even more crowded and more vibrant than we had ever imagined. Within this incredible cosmic tapestry, some galaxies appeared incredibly red and distant. These were the ones that scientists were most excited about. As scientists carefully studied the light from these very first galaxies, they began to notice something strange. Our theories about the early universe had painted a very specific picture. We believed that the first galaxies should be small, clumpy, somewhat chaotic. They would be like tiny seeds, slowly gathering gas and dust over billions of years, gradually merging and growing into the larger, more structured galaxies we see today. This was a story of slow, steady evolution, a gradual build-up from small beginnings to grand structures like our own Milky Way. But that is not what the James Webb Telescope saw. Peering into the cosmic dawn, at an era just 500 to 700 million years after the Big Bang, Webb found galaxies that were not small and clumpy. They were shockingly big. 
they were astonishingly bright and well-formed. Some of them appeared to be as massive as our own Milky Way, but at a time when the universe was less than 5% of its current age. It was like looking at a photograph of a toddler who was already the size of a full-grown adult. It simply did not make sense. The discovery sent a wave of shock and excitement through the astronomical community. The data was checked and then checked again. But the conclusion was inescapable. These massive galaxies were real. They were nicknamed universe breakers because their very existence seemed to break our standard model of cosmology. The established theory of galaxy formation is a patient one. It begins with the mysterious substance known as dark matter. After the Big Bang, we believe that dark matter began to clump together under its own gravity, forming vast invisible scaffolds or halos. Normal matter was then drawn by gravity into these dark matter halos. Within these halos, gas would cool, condense, and eventually ignite into the first stars. These first stellar nurseries would be small, slow-growing as they pulled in more gas and merged with other small, fledgling galaxies over eons. This process, hierarchical assembly, predicts a universe that builds things from the bottom up. Our computer simulations based on this model have been successful at recreating the universe we see today. The model predicted that when Webb looked back to the cosmic dawn, it would find only the smallest building blocks, the cosmic equivalent of single bricks, not fully constructed cathedrals. Perhaps the early universe was able to form enormous clouds of gas that collapsed directly and violently into massive galaxies, bypassing the slow, step-by-step -step merging process altogether. One possibility is that the seeds of these galaxies were far larger than we thought. It could also point to new physics, perhaps related to the nature of dark matter itself or the energy that drove the Big Bang. These massive ancient galaxies are not just curiosities, they are signposts pointing towards a deeper, more complex understanding of the cosmos. They are telling us that our story of creation is missing a crucial chapter right at the very beginning. The chapter is incomplete. The existence of these impossibly large early galaxies presents scientists with a profound puzzle. One of the biggest questions is about the supermassive black holes that are thought to reside at the center of every large galaxy, including our own. These black holes are titans, millions or even billions of times more massive than our sun. We believe that galaxies and their central black holes grow up together in a kind of cosmic dance. But if these ancient galaxies are already as massive as the Milky Way, they should also contain enormous supermassive black holes. How could a black hole grow so big so fast? The standard process of a black hole consuming gas and dust has a speed limit. If it tries to eat too quickly, the surrounding material heats up and pushes away other incoming fuel, choking off its own growth. To reach the sizes required by these universe breakers, these black holes would have had to have been eating constantly at the maximum possible rate from the very moment the universe began. This has led to some even more exotic ideas. Perhaps the very first stars were not like the stars we see today. Some theories suggest that the first stars were colossal beasts, hundreds of times more massive than our sun. When these giants died, they could have collapsed directly into large black holes, massive seed black holes with a significant head start, or maybe, just maybe, the problem lies with our understanding of gravity itself or the nature of dark matter. No theory is perfect. Every now and then, Nature shows us something that doesn't quite fit. Every great discovery in science begins with an observation that does not fit. For centuries, we believed the Earth was the center of the universe until we looked closer. We thought our Milky Way was the entire universe until we discovered that the faint fuzzy nebulae were actually other galaxies, islands of stars millions of light years away. Each time, our universe has grown larger, older, more wonderful than we had previously imagined. The discoveries from the James Webb Telescope are the next chapter in this long and humbling story. These massive early galaxies are forcing astronomers to go back to the drawing board. They are running new computer simulations, testing new ideas. Perhaps the gas in the early universe was colder than we thought, allowing it to collapse more quickly. Perhaps dark matter behaves in ways we do not yet understand. Or perhaps there are powerful cosmic forces at play that we have not yet even conceived of. 
The universe breakers are not a problem to be solved, but an opportunity to learn. They are a gift from the cosmos, a clue that we are on the verge of a deeper understanding. This is how science progresses. It is not a straight line of accumulating facts, but a winding path of curiosity, confusion, and sudden moments of breathtaking clarity. The story of the cosmos is still being written. The universe is not less magical for being understood. In fact, the more we learn, the more incredible it all becomes. Our place in this story is small, but our ability to comprehend it is vast. The James Webb Space Telescope has only just begun its mission. For years to come, it will stare into the abyss, gathering light from the farthest reaches of space and time. It will study the atmospheres of planets orbiting other stars. It will search for the chemical signs of life. It will watch stars being born and dying in spectacular explosions. It will map the cosmic dawn. It will find more mysterious giant galaxies. It may help solve the puzzle of their existence. Every day it opens a new window onto the universe. This journey of discovery is not just for scientists, it is for everyone. When we see Webb's images, we are explorers. These ancient galaxies are our distant ancestors. The atoms in our bodies were forged in stars. We are, quite literally, made of stardust. To look out is to look back at our origins. So next time you look up at the night sky, remember what is out there. Remember the silence. Remember the cold. Remember the vast, unimaginable distances. Remember the telescope, our golden eye, floating in the dark. Remember it gathering ancient light. Remember the mystery of giant galaxies that grew too big, too fast. The universe is not a static, predictable machine. It is an evolving, surprising place, full of wonders still waiting to be found. Let that sense of wonder guide you. Stay curious. Ask questions. Look with fresh eyes. Please like and subscribe to Cosmic Discover.